Welcome back Year 11. This will be another quick video for English Literature Paper 2. This is your modern text paper. So you are either answering a question on Animal Farm or Lord of the Flies. And your poetry paper. We've done Power and Conflict Poetry Cluster and then Unseen Poetry, just like we practised in class. This exam will be on Friday the 25th of May this year, 2018, and this is your longest English exam. Most of you will have 2 hours 15 minutes for this exam, those of you with extra time you'll have 2 hours 48 minutes for this exam. We need to make sure that we're timing every single question to ensure that we can finish the paper. Now, question 1, Animal Farm or Lord of the Flies. You spend 45 minutes on that question, 55 minutes if you've got extra time. For your power and conflict poetry comparison, you spend 45 minutes on that question, or 55 minutes if you have extra time. For your unseen poem, you spend 35 minutes on that question, 45 minutes if you've got extra time. And then for your unseen comparison, that little eight mark question at the end, you spend 10 minutes on that question, regardless of whether you have extra time or not. I always write down the timings on my exam paper that make sure that I'm focused all the way through. I would usually keep a watch on my desk as well. If you don't have a watch, you can use the clock in the sports hall. Okay, like English Literature Paper 1, different schools study different texts. So when you get in there and you see these questions, don't panic. You're not expected to know them. Half of us have studied William Golding's Lord of the Flies. The other half have studied George Orwell's Animal Farm. You go to the page of the book you have studied. I'm going to go for Animal Farm today. So I turn to page 12. And you get a choice of two questions. Do not answer them both because your examiner will only mark the first one. Do not answer them both because you do not have time. Read each question before making your choice. So question one. Orwell creates a shocking and unexpected ending to Animal Farm. How far do you agree with the statement? What happens towards the end of the novel? How does he present the ending? 30 marks, four for AO4. Always highlight or underline your keywords. So we're thinking about how he creates a shocking and unexpected ending. We're thinking about whether we agree with this statement. We're focusing here on the end of the novel and how that is presented. Already as you're re reading the question, you can be jotting down your ideas. Okay, is it shocking? Yeah, relatively so, depending on how cynical you are. Is it unexpected? Not really. Why? Because all the way through, Orwell is using foreshadowing to suggest that this animal utopia is not going to be such a perfect, happy ending like you might expect in a fairy story. My second option is here. So how does Orwell use the character of Snowball to explore ideas about leadership in Animal Farm? Write about what Snowball says and does and what happens to him. Write about how Orwell presents Snowball. So this is interesting. We've got a character focus here, character of Snowball, and then also a theme focus. How does Snowball show ideas of leadership? We're thinking about Snowball, what he says, what he does and what happens to him and how he's presented. Choose the question you want to answer. Most students last year chose 17, but it's completely up to you. Whatever you're most confident with, whichever one you'll enjoy the most. We always start by planning our answer. So plan your theses and just like with paper, one, you're planning your three, maybe four paragraph ideas. Once you've completed your plan, you might want to jot down some keywords to remember, and then you are ready to write up your answer. You're going to write it in the writing booklet, and you have just 45 minutes, actually 35 minutes, once you've spent 10 minutes planning. Once you've finished your modern text question, can't relax just yet, you move on to the poetry section. 
Now, some schools have studied love and relationship poems. We have not read or studied them poems, so please don't attempt to answer them questions. Aha, here they are, our power and conflict poetry cluster. Gives you a list of all the poems that we studied, all the ones you know and love. And then you turn the page for the big reveal of what is your named poem. Last year it was Bayonet Charge. Again, you follow your steps to your success. You read the question and highlight it for your keywords. Compare how poets present the effects of war in Bayonet Charge and in one other poem from Power and Conflict. So we are always comparing for our A01 marks. We are always focusing on how for our AO2 marks. And here we are looking at the effects of war in Bayonet Charge and another poem of your choice. Your second step is to read and annotate the poem on the page. This is a poem you will know already, so it won't be a surprise. We still, we still like with paper one, need to pick out our five quotes that we want to use. So for example, here, the opening, the patriotic tear, how war is all the way through shot the interesting methods you're finding for example your sejuri your rhetorical questions okay and looking for similes metaphors structural points interesting language points and make sure as well that you're annotating so that You've got lots to write about in your question. Your third step is to choose your comparison poem. Now, some of you might know straight away what you'd use for that question. Some of you might need a bit of guidance. Okay, our question's on the effects of war. So you're gonna talk about Ozymandias? No, not really. Are you gonna talk about Blake's London? Not really. Are you gonna talk about the prelude? Not really. Are you gonna talk about My Last Duchess? These are not war poems, so they wouldn't be wise choices. Okay, you might talk about Charge of the Light Brigade or Exposure. Storm on the Island could be a maybe as it's linked to the uh, the troubles and conflict in Ireland. You're not going to choose Bayonet Charge because that's on the page. You might choose Remains. You might choose Poppies. You might choose War Photographer, but I think that one's not the best one for this question. You could choose Kamikaze. Overall, you choose the poem that's right for you and for this question. Once you've chosen one, highlight it. And then, as always, we plan our answer. We plan a thesis. We plan our three comparative paragraphs. Always end with the message of the poem. Once you've spent 10 minutes planning, just like in question one, you now spend 40, uh, 35 minutes or 45 minutes if you've got extra time writing up your answer. Don't forget that with your paragraphs they are still square quals and you're always linking to context throughout so you get your A3 marks but also because the context informs your reading of the poems. Okay, moving on. You get to the unseen poem. This is a poem that no year 11 would have seen before. You answer it on the day using your own reading and analytical skills. So step one is to read the question. In autumn, how does the poet present the effects of the season of autumn? Okay, so we're thinking about the how. Does the poet present the effects the season of autumn. Then, step two, read the poem once and then write down what you think the tone of that poem is, that is the emotion in the poem. Then, read the poem a second time and this time you are getting your quotes, you are annotating for your techniques and the effect, getting 
at least five quotes from your unseen poem. Again, before we write, we need to plan our answer. Yet again, that's a thesis statement. Paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three. Don't forget with an unseen poem, we're using the acronym SMILE. So within your analysis, you need to make sure that you are looking at the structure of the text. You are looking at the meaning or the message in the text. You are looking at any imagery in the text, including lexical groups, so you're spotting your patterns of language. You're looking at other interesting language features in the text. And you are always commenting on how that makes you feel as a reader. Is it shock? Is it surprise? Is it comfort? Is it happiness? Sadness? Your effect on the reader. You might also want to comment on the form of the poem as well, whether it's a sonnet, dramatic monologue, narrative poem. Once you've spent approximately eight minutes planning this question, you're writing it up in the booklet. Then you get to your final question on this beast of a paper. This is an unseen comparison. So you're using your first poem, Autumn, and your second poem, this one's called Today. In both Today and Autumn, the speakers describe attitudes towards the seasons. What are the similarities and or differences between the ways the poets present these attitudes? Eight marks, ten minutes, there's quite a lot to do. You were already told that both poems describe attitudes towards seasons. We're looking at similarities or differences in how they present the attitudes. So you're looking at AO1 understanding of the differences and the similarities and also your AO2 in how they present them. Just from looking on the page, I can see that they are presented differently. This poem is written in couplets. Now, you read the second poem, you're going to quickly choose a couple of key quotes, two or three would be enough, and then you're going to plan out, with my group we do a table of similarities, differences, or you might want to do Venn diagrams like we've practiced in class, similarities and differences. Realistically, in 10 minutes, you're going to need two ideas. So maybe two similarity, two differences, or even one similarity, two differences. Once you've planned this question, you write it up in the writing booklet. Again, you are looking at using SMILE for your techniques. So please think about the structure of the poems, is that similar or different? Please think about the meaning and the message or the tone of the poems, is that similar or different? Please think about the imagery in the poems, the language in the poems, and the effect on the reader in the poem. Once you write that question up, you're looking for about half a page, and you are done, and you've finished your English Literature GCSE. Well done, guys.